In this video, I'm going to discuss how to construct a scatter plot, um, how to find the trend line for that scatter plot, and how to find the R squared and R values. Right? So, um, you know, I have data, say I have data on X and Y, right? And these are just two variables, and I, where X is my independent variable, and Y is my dependent variable. Okay, so so for example, um, you know, if x is two, then depending on that value, y then will be sixteen, right? So the value, so say x is um, the number of hours I'm spending studying for a test, and y is um, you know the grade that I get on that test, right? So x is my independent and y is my dependent. That's very important. So I'm just gonna make up some data. Let me just paste it there, okay? So it's just made up data, right? But whatever data you have, you can use for this. So um, first thing I wanna do when I wanna construct that scatter plot is just go ahead and highlight my data. So the way I did that is I put my cursor on my first data here. I click and I held my, my, my clicker and I dragged it down so I had all my data highlighted, but not too much, right? So just the data, and then unclick, okay? And then I'm gonna go up top, and I'm gonna press Insert. And I'm gonna go right here, where I have this scatter chart looking guy. And I'm gonna press this scatter chart here, right? So not any of the ones with the lines, right? Those, those, none of those. This one here, this is the one I want, the scatter plot, okay? Uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and you know give your chart a title. So, you know whatever your data is, you can go ahead and label it. Also, um, just really quickly before I get into the trend line and all that, um, it is also a good idea, good practice to always give labels. So the way you do that is you go up top here under chart design and um, go ahead and give it horizontal and vertical labels. Okay. So I'll just call this Y, Y, and then I'll call this one, uh, got a little messed up, but that's okay, X. All right, I'm gonna close that out. Okay, so have my scatter chart now. Now, just looking at the scatter chart, I can see that it appears that high or low values of X, so when X is really low, y is high, right? And then it appears that x, as x gets higher, y gets lower, right? So there's kind of an inverse relationship here, right? We're noticing that when x increases, y is decreasing. So as x is increasing, y is decreasing, okay? So that's called a negative correlation. So we can already see that th this data has a negative correlation. That is what a negative correlation is by definition. It means that as one variable is increasing, the other one is decreasing. A positive correlation would be if, let me change my color here, if we had seen our plot look like something like this, then this would have been a positive correlation where x increasing also led to y increasing, right? So if x increases and y increases, this is a positive correlation. However, what we're seeing is a negative correlation, right? So if I were to delete, right? So for our data, we see that as x increases, we're seeing y decrease, right? We're having this negative slope, all right? So actually, I just said something interesting. I said we have a negative slope, right? So how do, actually, how do I estimate the slope of this line, right? It's not an exact line, but, there, but it's, there's you know, some random variability around a potential linear line here, right? That's our trend line. So to find that, I need to take any of these points. So if I click on one of them, they'll all highlight, and then right click, and then it'll say add trend line. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. When I do that, there's a nice trend line that happens, right? So um, I want a linear trend line. Now, if you wanted to get fancy, you could do all these other different types of trend lines. Um, 
But for right now, for the purpose of this discussion, I just want a linear trend line. Okay. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. I want to display the equation and I want to display R squared. Now Excel always puts that in a very inconvenient spot. So when you see it over here on your plot, move it somewhere that you can actually see it. So move it up top or something. Okay. Then once you have that, you can go ahead and close this box by pressing that close button. All right, so this is what I want to look at. So what's happening here? First, let's look at this trend line. So this is the trend line. This is the equation of this dotted line you see here, right? So this is the equation of that dotted line. Now, remember from you know high school math, right? Y equals mx plus b, right? And in this, you know, this e equation, m is the slope, right? And b is the y-intercept, right? So b, in other words, is the value of y when x is zero. It's the, what is it, 16 point something? So this line, technically, it extends beyond, it hits somewhere around 16.94, right? So it's the value of y when x is zero. Now, a lot of times, the y-intercept is not interpretable. Right now, if this was the number of hours you spent studying and why is your grade on your test, then it looks like uh, people who study a lot um, are actually getting worse grades on their test. Right. But someone who studies not at all gets the highest grade. Right. So that's why this is made up and not real data. Right. But, uh, you know, in, in that scenario, interpreting the intercept actually does make sense because we can imagine someone not studying at all for their test. But a lot of times it doesn't make sense to interpret an intercept. So for example, um, if x is your height and y is your weight, then it doesn't make sense for you to have a zero height. No, you never have a zero height. So in that situation, that, that intercept would not really be interpretable. And that happens a lot, right? It's just the theoretic, theoretically, what would the value of y be when x is zero? Now what about the slope? The slope is even more interesting. So what is the slope? The slope, okay, is the amount change, so slope is the change in y when x increases by one. All right, so when x increases by 1, so let's let's do that over here. So uh, let's say I'm at 10. So x increases by 1. That would be till we're about 11, right? Then how does y change? y decreases by, so if this is an increase by 1, x increases by 1, then y decreases by negative 1.15 seven, seven, right? It decreases by the slope, right? So the way we would say that is, so for every one unit increase in x, okay, because uh, slope is negative, we'll say y decreases, so decreases because of the negative slope, decreases, by 1.1577. So that's how we would interpret that trend line. Okay. Okay, now what about r and r squared? Well, first let's start with what is r squared because they give us r squared. Uh, Excel doesn't automatically give us r, but it does automatically give us r squared. So what is r squared? This is the coefficient of determination. Right, and um, that is basically uh, an, up the percent, so it's a percentage, and it's a percentage between 0% and 100%. So right now we're at 88.72%, right? You can convert decimals to percentages, just move the decimal over two points, right? So 
we are at 88.72%. Now, what is the percentage of? It's the percent of variation in y, right? Because y is varying all over the place, right? It's varying, this is like, you know, if this is your grade, then this is like all the variability in different grades that people are getting, right? So it's the variation in, in grade or variation in y that's explained by x, right? So that's explained by the number of hours that you've spent studying. So you can see 88.72, you would call that a relatively uh, large um, coefficient of determination, meaning that x is doing a pretty good job of determining the value of y, right? So x is doing a pretty good job of determining the value of y. 88.72% of the variation in y is explained by x. Let me go ahead and write that down. 88.72% of variation, by variation I mean like this, the spread, this variation in y, variation, 88.72%, a variation in y is explained by x, okay? All right. Okay, so now what about R? What about R? R is our correlation coefficient. Okay, and there's a few ways you can figure this out. Uh, first thing, you could type in equals core, E-L, so C-O-R-R-E-L, and then open parentheses. Actually, once you see it there, you could also just click on it, double click. Okay, then it tells you, tells you what it wants, array one and array two. So highlight, x, okay, so click and drag and then let go once you've highlighted all your x values, then type comma, and then it's ready for array 2, and you can see that because it's bold and array 2. Click your y data, okay, so click and drag, then let go, and then close those parentheses and press enter, okay, and that's that's one way you can figure out the um, the correlation coefficient. Another way is since you know the coefficient of determination, which is r squared, you could take the square root of that, sqrt, okay? So square root is sqrt. So you have to, don't forget, write that equal sign. So equals sqrt, open the parentheses, and then just type in 0 0.8872. Close parentheses and press enter. Now notice it didn't tell us a negative number. Why is it not negative? Well, when you take the square root of any number, you're gonna get a positive number. So you need to recognize that this is a negative correlation because I have a negative slope, right? If the slope were positive, then it's a positive correlation. So since I have a negative slope, you have to type in that negative sign and press enter. So the numbers are slightly different and that's just due to rounding. So speaking of rounding, um, you should always be using Excel to round for you. Students a lot of times make mistakes with rounding errors, okay? So if you go to the home button, press over here, right? Increase decimal or decrease decimal. So let's decrease until let's, we'll have three decimals, okay? Actually, four decimals. Okay, now you can see they're exactly the same once you have, you know, you've kind of rounded off some. Okay. All right, so one last thing let's talk about is R. Okay, what is R and how do we interpret it? So R is our correlation coefficient, and it's any number between negative 1 and 1. And R tells us both the strength and direction of our correlation, okay? So any numbers very close to the extremes, one and negative one, that's a strong correlations. Uh, negative, obviously strong negative correlation. Positive, strong positive correlation. And then when you're at zero, the correlation is basically, it doesn't exist, right? Meaning X and Y really don't have anything to do with each other, okay? So our X and Y do, does one depend heavily, does y depend heavily on x? If yes, 
then you would have a correlation coefficient towards the extremes of negative 1 or 1. Does y not even care in the slightest what x is? If so, then r is going to be close to 0. Okay, so how much does y depend on x? That's what the correlation coefficient is telling us. So we can see that this 0.94 or negative 0.9419, that is a relatively strong negative correlation. All right, so that does it for this video. If you have any questions, please uh, feel welcome to uh, go ahead and post down there in the comments. Thanks for watching.